My brothers and sisters, we are human beings. It is only natural and normal that sometimes we feel very happy and sometimes we feel sad. So when we are happy, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that has made us happy? If it is the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is something everlasting. If it is something material connected to this world, remember it is temporary and the day will come when Allah will test you by reversing it. It has to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said clearly that if you are given and bestowed something, it is not a guarantee that that item will remain with you. In a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains, we will definitely test every single one of you with some of fear, with some of hunger, and with several different types of loss. It's a long verse, but what I want to look at today is when we are sad, what exactly do we need to do? Firstly, ask yourself, is my relationship with the maker, the owner of happiness, good? Is it intact? Is it proper? For example, if I am a person who has no link with Salah, no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do I expect to combat the sadness that I am feeling? I will continue feeling more sad because I have lost focus. Lost focus from what? from the reality, the destination, from exactly where I am. This is known as the world. In Arabic, we call it the dunya, this life. The life on earth is absolutely temporary. It is not going to last long. We, in actual fact, are here to be tested. It is a testing ground. Evidence regarding the fact that this is a testing ground is that none of us has what we want in this world. Rather, we only get what Allah has chosen for us. So he tests us with health matters, financial matters, family matters, so many other different issues, different types of loss. Things do not happen according to how we want them to happen. Because Allah is telling you, hang on, this is just a test. We want to see how you react. Will this bring you closer to us? Will it make you realize that it is temporary? Absolutely temporary. People we found are very sad today and some news comes to them within a split second. They can become the happiest people on earth and vice versa. We've seen it happening. So this is Allah. He is the one who gives you glad tidings. You become so excited after you were so sad and you can become so sad after you believed you had everything on earth. This is Allah's plan. Do not lose focus. It is Allah. However, like I said, when you are sad, the first question you have to ask yourself, how is my relationship with Allah? That relationship is connected to your salah, primarily your five daily prayers. Do you read them with enthusiasm? We are not even talking about regularity because that is supposed to be the case anyway. But we're talking about enthusiasm. Do you look forward to the prayer? Do you realize what you are doing when you are reading or fulfilling the five daily prayers? Sit for a moment and think it will snatch your sadness. It will withdraw. It will combat the sadness you are feeling just by thinking for a moment. What am I doing? Who am I putting my head on the ground for here? Who is it? The one who made me, the one who owns my happiness, the one who's in control and ultimately the one I'm going to go back to when my eyes close like everybody else's eyes have already closed and are closing and will close. I'm going to go back to the supreme deity whom I've just put my head on the ground for Allahu Akbar. It is powerful. If you sit and ponder over it, that alone will help you to remove the sadness in your life. Because even if everything is going against your liking, you are assured that it is going according to the plan of Allah. Nothing goes according to someone else's plan. It is Allah's plan. So it makes you happy to say, Oh Allah, if this is your plan for me, then Ya Allah, just make it easy for me to go through. I'm not going to compete with you. We can never compete with Allah. But we call out to him. He gives us the energy. He gives us various means to try and help ourselves. And he expects us to use what he has given us to help ourselves. And on top of that, we would be asking Allah to remove the sadness. Even the Prophet ﷺ was told not to be sad. Oh, Messenger, do not let those who disbelieve sadden you.
Allah is telling Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Don't let their statements sadden you. People will say things against you. Do you really think in this world everybody is going to be in favor of you, uttering good words about you? If they could utter the worst words about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who are you and who am I? Subhanallah." We are nobodies. They will probably utter even worse words about us. So Allah is saying, don't let it stress you. Don't let it worry you. And you need to remember, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the sadness in the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa regarding the disbelievers who not only did not accept Islam, but they had bad words. They spread rumor. They spread false statements regarding Islam Allah says we know that their statements have saddened you their statements are making you sad we know that but we want to give you comfort by telling you they do not belie you they know you are truthful they know you are the prophet of Allah they are just denying it out of arrogance don't let the arrogant make you sad don't let those who are transgressing against Allah, who love to spread rumor, who have bad habits, bad qualities, make you sad. No, don't. If your link with Allah is intact or is powerful or you are developing it every day, nothing should make you sad. You should be saying, Subhanallah, that is the praise of Allah. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Those statements should be removing the sadness from your heart if only you uttered them correctly because Allah says indeed those who believe and they are granted comfort by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the remembrance of Allah comforts the heart you want comfort in your heart you are sad remember Allah how do you remember Allah I'd like to go through this spend a few moments because it's important many of us like I say human beings we feel sad but a believer is given the remedy to that sadness one of them is develop your salah the quality of it. Take your time when you're making wudu. Take your time. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by standing facing the qibla. And when you say Allahu Akbar, you should know what you are saying. I'm saying Allah is the greatest. He who made me is the greatest. He who has chosen this problem to be in my life is actually the greatest. He is my Lord and you are praising him, declaring his praise and you are concentrating in your prayer. You have taken your time. When you complete your prayer, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You feel rejuvenated. You feel complete. You feel like you've just had communication with your Rabb, the one in charge, the one in control. What more do you want? Secondly, take your time when it comes to the Quran. That is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah addresses all mankind saying, O oh people, indeed a reminder or a warning has come to you from your maker and a cure for the diseases of the heart. One of them is sadness. It's a disease. It is what lies in the chest. Sadr actually means the chest. Some would refer to the heart because it is inside the chest. But anything in your chest, when sadness is felt, where is it felt? People put their hands on the chest, you know, I'm sad. It's not like it's in the chest, but it's the feeling, it's man, it's the nature of man. You say, I'm so sad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us overcome sadness. So you want to overcome it? Remember the Quran is the remedy. How many of us take our time? Listen carefully. Wallahi, this is a remedy. Take our time to happily, gladly open the Quran. That is the word of Allah every morning before we leave the home and read even five minutes of your time. So happily and we read the Arabic, we try to perfect it, we try to improve as the days pass, we read melodiously. Did you know that there are two ways of reading the Quran? One is just to read it as though you, you're reading a book. And the other is to read it, to try and put in to it some melody for the sake of Allah. It is a melodious recitation, it is tartil, it is to be intoned in a certain way. So try it, don't be shy. When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, yes, these are powerful words of Allah. But try saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. See what it does to you. It's different. 
It's the word of Allah. Do it for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, this is a remedy for your sadness. When you give the Quran, the word of Allah, the importance it is supposed to be having, it combats your sadness without you realizing. You're a happy person. People look at you. You have bigger problems than all of them put together, but you are smiling. You still say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. People think you've got no issue. There is nobody on earth who has no issue. Remember that. It's just the way they are managing and coping is different. You think you have a problem. Wallahi, there are people sitting right near you in the same masjid that perhaps have problems a hundred times the size of yours, but you won't realize it. They have a link with Allah. They know this world is temporary. That brings me to another point. Once you've developed your link with the Quran and you try to read and you try to understand and you try to put things forth and you develop a link with Allah and your dhikr, remembrance of Allah is in order. Your salah is in order. You need to be able to appreciate what Allah has given you that he has not given others. That is one way of combating your sadness. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Unzuru ila man huwa dunakum. Look at those who have less than you, who are lower than you. You know, I was speaking to a brother. You might laugh at what I'm about to say, but I want to show you what we become sad regarding. Petty things, minor things. Brother says, I'm very sad. Why? Because I don't have hot water at home. People don't have water, let alone hot water. Really? And you are sad because you don't have hot water. So I met him one week later. I said, how is your problem, my brother? He said, which problem? I said, the one that broke your back. He was saying, what do you mean? I said, you know, in the Quran, Allah speaks about problems that almost break the backs of people. When the Prophet ﷺ had a problem, it was not connected to him or his dunya. It was connected to the deen, the religion. That's why I said, you ask yourself a question. Is this matter related to the deen or the dunya? The matter I am sad about is if it's connected to the deen, then yes, it is a matter I should be sad about. I, I combat it in a similar way. But if it is connected to the dunya or this life, then I need to know number one, life is temporary. Days do not last. It will not be the same. After nightfall comes day and after day comes night. Remember that. That's the plan of Allah. So I, the brother tells me, what was it? I said, you complained. You said you are very sad because you didn't have hot water. He said, no, I have hot water, but I'm still sad. Why? Because the water is trickling from the shower. It's not come. It's hot, but it's very little that comes out. It's not much. And I'm thinking, subhanAllah, my brother, people don't have water. People have water that is not hot. Now you have hot, you have water and you have hot water, but you are still sad. It shows you are connected to something material that is very temporary. Remember this. A lot of us are sad because of something temporary. You lost wealth. Everybody's lost wealth. Nobody seated here has not suffered a loss. Everybody has. They've dealt with it differently. They've suffered at different levels. Allah tests you according to your level. In one narration, the hadith says, Allah tests you according to how much He loves you. When he loves you more, he tests you more. That's a hadith. It's because when you have a problem and an issue, it is human nature that when you have a problem, you start looking for solutions. And a believer will look for solutions by getting close to Allah. So when Allah wants you to become very close to him, he gives you a bigger problem because he knows if you didn't have this one major issue in your life, perhaps you wouldn't even be bothered about reading salah. You wouldn't even be bothered about calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, you know what? Think about those who have less so you can appreciate what you do have. So I said, my brother, take a bucket, fill the bucket with the water. When you are ready, you take a little pan and then you can bath out of the pan. He says, I didn't think of that, but it's so inconvenient. Look, when you want to be sad, then you look for sadness, even when there's happiness glaring you in your face. You need to know this. So don't be sad. My brother, there is a solution. You have water, alhamdulillah, learn to bath with cold water. It is more healthy. Go and read about the health aspects of bathing with cold water. I'm not saying we should force ourselves, but it will help you the day there is no hot water. And then, you don't need to keep showering every day with full force shower. You, all you need is you need to be able to have a little bit of water that you can do your ghusl and your bath. Fill it in a bucket. Learn the bucket challenge. When people spoke about it, they were wasting water. With us, we've been doing that bucket challenge ever since we were born. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. You save water and there is barakah. Perhaps Allah wants to show you. People complain, you know what? We only have electricity for three hours a day. There are nations that have not seen electricity for months on end. What about that? 
Thank Allah you have it for three hours. You have an inverter, you have a generator. Stop complaining. These tests are far easier than those who are being bombed and aerial bombing on a daily basis. Do you agree? Why then do we say I'm sad? So the whole world will be sad. Who is going to thank Allah? You cannot say I am sad because Allah has taken away something material from me. You have to say, Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. I praise Allah upon all conditions. Wa a'udhu billahi min hali ahli nar. I seek Allah's protection from one condition, and that is the condition of those who shall be cast into hellfire. Besides that, Alhamdulillah. Something happens, Alhamdulillah. All conditions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Another very important way of combating sadness, my beloved brothers and sisters, is to look at the creatures of Allah. Look at the trees, look at the animals, look at the greenery, look at you, when you're breathing the air, consider what you are breathing, take a look at the sunset, the sunrise. Allah says, indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the rotation of the night and the day are signs for those with intellect. Remember this, there are signs, these signs, yes, they show you the oneness of Allah, the closeness of, that you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah, but they also alleviate your suffering. There are many signs. This is why when a person is stressed, sometimes those counselors will tell you, go and take a look at the greenery, sit and watch. You see the water, you see the horses, you see a beautiful scene. What does it do to you? It de-stresses you. For a disbeliever, it's just the scenery. It's a creator, creation of Allah. For us, it is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What has Allah not given me? I can travel. People complain about potholes. There are nations that don't have roads, forget about potholes. You become sad because you've suffered a little accident. People have not only lost limbs, they've lost loved ones. May Allah help us. Don't be sad. Really, these days are not permanent, they are temporary. The only time you should be sad is when you have drifted away from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something that saddens a lot of people. People become depressed. They become sad because your life is full of partying, full of gambling, full of adultery, full of drinking, full of drugs. How do you not expect sadness when you are far away from Allah? You want to combat the sadness. Come back to Allah. Come. Allah is waiting for you. Allah becomes so happy when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah is happy, He will definitely make you happy. My brothers and sisters, remember, sadness is something that you can do much about. And the evidence of it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not be sad at this and do not be sad at that. You know when Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave. And they were in this cave of Thawr where on their way to Medina. Medina Munawwara and the, uh, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the greatest to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you hear the name of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, go out of your way to say radiallahu anhu. It is important because he was the best without a doubt. It was clear and it was completely manifest. May Allah bless him and bless his entire family. I mean, so he was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was saddened slightly. And Muhammad sallallahu read verses that were revealed to him, a portion of it, don't be sad, Allah is with us. Do you know what this means for me and you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? No matter what they're going to try, it's only by the permission of Allah that they will be able to achieve if Allah wants them to. And it's going to be better for you either way. This is why I want to end with a powerful narration that I'm sure we've heard before, but it always brings about a lot of comfort in our hearts. Amazing are the affairs of a true believer. All of his affairs are always good. Nothing bad can happen to a true believer. Why? إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءُ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ When goodness happens to a true believer, he is thankful. So it's better for him. It's good for him. How do you thank Allah? When you have happy days, my brothers and sisters, and this is one way of combating sadness that may be in your path. When you have happy days, get close to Allah. Don't wait for the sad days to quickly turn to Allah. Although that is okay, but it's not good enough. The hadith says, Ta'arraf ilallahi fi rakhai ya'rifka fi shidda. Get close to Allah in days of ease. And you find in days of difficulty, Allah will be very close to you. You won't even feel. You will carry on. So the hadith says, when something bad 
You know, darra means something harmful, hurtful, something that is perhaps not to your liking, overtakes a believer. He is patient. He bears sabr. He knows the reward with Allah. And so therefore it is better for him. This is why his affairs are amazing. Goodness happens, he is thankful. Bad happens, he is patient. But he's never upset with Allah. He's never angry. He's always smiling. He's always remembering Allah. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. These are the words. These are the actions that will alleviate the sadness that we feel sometimes as human beings. Because a true believer is always taught the method of earning closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which all your sadness will be taken away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us happiness in this dunya as well as in the next. The ultimate sadness will be when a person is cast into hellfire. And the ultimate happiness will be when a person receives his book on the day of judgment on, in his right hand and he is told for you is paradise. Then you need to know that's it. I'm the happiest man on earth.